In this video, I will show you how to create a user with an email and a password. So in the last video, we have create a user with Anonymous and we uh, know how to keep the user login and how to log out the user. But now we will add a button. So you will see a two text field where we can put the email and the password, a text place where we'll display the error if we have some, and then you will see a raise it button as well on this login page. So we have quite a lot to do on this one. Okay, so first of all, inside the login page, we will need to go over the right raise it button and we will need to refactor with a column. Okay, so I will refactor and for a refactor, it's, uh, you can press control dot as well with a column. That's good. So next thing we need to add is a text field, a place where we can add some text from the user. So as you can see, I have add a text field and then you can write some text inside. So that, that is pretty nice. Next step, we will need to add uh, inside the, this text form field. So, oops, sorry about that. I will just move that on the side. Okay. And in this text form field, we will add a constructor. So, oops, the constructor where it is, control space and controller. Perfect. So the controller, yeah. Okay, and how to add the controller? First of all, we will need a state full widget instead of the state less widget because uh, the error message will need to be updated right after the, the text form field, if we have some error message. So we need a state full widget instead. So we right click on it and we say refactor and convert to state full widget. You can press control dot as well to refactor. Okay. We have our state full widget. Now under the class extend, right before the future login anno, we will need to add our controllers. The first one will be the text controller, a uh, text editing controller, and we will call it the controller email. Good. And this will be equal to the text editing controller with the parentheses. Okay, so the text editing controller is the type and then we are declaring the text editing controller after the equal sign with the bracket at the end. Okay, I will copy this one and I will paste it. So we have two controller. So this one will be for the password. The text editing controller is to have the value of the user input. Okay. So we add inside the, after the argument controller, we add the controller email. And now we can write some text and everything is good. Okay, we will copy this one and we will paste it right under. Okay, now we can see that uh, we will need to change the controller to controller password. And uh, we will have another text field, but we will need to add the other comma as well right here. That's good. So we have two line, two line of code. One is for the email and one is for the password. But if we want to display something to, to tell the user, is it the password or an email? What do you want in this? We add the argument decoration, the, the widget input decoration, and after an argument int text. And this will display some text on the screen before the user enter his input. So as you can see, we have the email information right here. And when the user writes something, the email disappears. But we can use even something even better. And this one is the um, label text. So the label text will display the information first. And when the user writes some text inside, write the input, the email will just go on the top. So the information will go on the top. So the user always know what is inside this text field. That's good. So we can copy this decoration argument and paste it inside the other text form field. But now we will need to change the value of the label text by password on this one. That's good. So we have our two text form field and now we can uh, get the information of what the user have input with the controllers that we have add. 
Then we want a text widget to display some error if we have some. By example, if the user, uh, if the email it's not valid, we will have an error. If the email, uh, if the password is not enough long, we will have an error. So we will create a variable for this text value and the variable will be the string. First of all, it will be a string and it will be called error. Perfect. So we will display the error inside this text field. And as you can see, the error is currently null. So we will need to initialize error with an empty text, just like that. So when we start the application, so if we restart the app, we will see that there is no text to display because it is only an empty field, empty value. That's good, but when we will have error, we will see it. After we need a raised button. So we can copy this one, the one for the login anno, we can paste it right under and change the value for create a user, by example. Okay, so that's good. Next step that we will need to do is to create our other function. So we have a function for the login, but we will need a function for the create. So let's say a future of void and this one, let's call it create user. And then we will need to uh, have a user credential and a user credential uh, value. So right like this, like this, like the login anonymously function, it is pretty much the same. So we say user credential equal to uh, firebase dot odd, firebase odd dot instance to start the firebase and then say sign in with email and password. So what will be inside the email? So now it's the time to use the controllers. So we will say inside this email. So if we go down, you can see that we have the controller email and this keep the value of the input of the user. So now we can write inside the controller email. And if we use, so this one, and if we use dot text, then this will give the value inside the text that the user have input. So we use the same thing for the controller password. We say controller password dot text and we can format document then. There we go. So we have a little error and this one is saying, okay, you are called a future user credential, but you are kind of not waiting, waiting for it. So we will say await. And if we put a await, you need to put as well a async. So we put the async right here and now things are coming up. That's good. After that, we will need to say widget on sign in and we can change the value of on sign in anno because right now we don't want to create another one. We can reuse the same one. So we will remove anno just to put uh, the on sign in everywhere. So we will put on sign in on sign in and on sign in instead. So we will be able to reuse this function. And then we can recall this one. We can say first print the user credential dot user. So we will see it on our terminal right here. That's good. So we put the comma, the semicolon, sorry. And then we say widget dot on sign in. So because we are recalling the on sign in, and the widget is because this is inside the other class. So we say widget dot on sign in. And then we put inside the user credential dot user. So it's, it is pretty much the same as the login anonymously. Okay. After that, what we can see is, um, that's pretty much good. So, okay. Next step, what we will need to do is uh, right before the uh, user credential, we will need to try it. And if it fell, then put something else. So we put everything inside our try. And then in the catch, we will catch what can happen if the user display wrong information. So we will say on Firebase at exception, 
So if there is an exception of Firebase, then do this. And this will be the error will be equal. So error will be equal to the E because E means error. So it will be equal to the error dot message. So the error will refresh inside our screen and we will actually see the error. So when we press on login on create user, we can see that we are logged in. This is because we, uh, we are not using the create user function. So we'll use this one instead. Okay, I will log out. And then when we, we click on create user, we are still logging inside the application. So that is pretty weird. I will just restart the app. And if we check this, create user, sign in with email and password, everything seems pretty good right now. So if I click on it, it's still login. Why? Uh, Batman. Ah, okay. It is because inside our file decision tree, we have an error. And this error is because uh, right under, we need to change the unsign in anno for unsign in because we did it on previous pages. Okay, now we can restart and it should work. So when we click on create user, we have the platform exception. Okay, so the platform exemption will occur and you will need to press on play multiple time and this is pretty boring. So I will quit the application. I will run it, but without debugging. So when you run it without debugging, the platform exemption will not pop up. So this is way much fun to code. So I will use the run without debugging and we will restart the application because we are already handling the exception. Okay, we have the app. When we click on it, nothing display. And uh, this is because we will need to change the error message and we will need to say a set state before. So in the terminal, there is nothing much that we can look. We'll need to add a set state to refresh the error message. So we take a set state and then we take the error right here. So the error will be inside the set state. So this will rebuild everything and show the new error. So as you can see, we have the error right here. So the given string is empty or null. So you need to write some code, some, some text. Then you have another error. So the email is not good. Okay. Let's add a at to see what happened. Then let's add a full email. And how? That's good. Now it's say that you need to activate the uh, sign in and out. So we will go inside Google or Firebase authentication and we will enable the email and password. That's good. Next step, we have saved and now we can go back in our coding mode. So if I press again, what we will see is uh, the user is not identifier. So the user is not existing. And this is because we are using the function sign in with email and password. But we were supposed to use the create user with email and password. Sorry for that. So we use the create a user. So we will create a new user. That's good. So then we can press once again on create user because we don't want to sign in, but create. And now it's say you need a password at least of six characters. Okay. What we will do now is we have a view pretty much all exception possible. Now I will create an email that I can remember with a very, very strong password. And then we will press on create user. And as you can see, we have created a brand new user with an email and a password of the choice of the user. So this is very nice. It is the first time we have done it and it's very cool for me. I think it is pretty nice. So if you go back inside your user, you can see the email of the user. So every time you look inside your Firebase login, uh, your Firebase console, you will see every user that have login into your application. 
and every email. So you can see who is logging inside your app. And this is pretty very nice. Okay, next step, we will try to recreate a user with the same email and the same password. In this one, if we click on it, it say, okay, you cannot do it because there is already a user that used this email. So on the next video, what we will need to do is create a button that is on uh, is sign in with user and password. So see you on the next one. Bye.